Hello and welcome to Match Fishing TV. In this week's show, we'll be looking at the Dial Pop Fishing Masters at Tunnel Barn Farm, uh, Maver Match This qualifiers, Fishermania qualifier, and you probably noticed that we're not in our usual studio. That's because we are at the first day of the Dial Pop Fishing Masters, Tunnel Barn Farm, and I'm joined by Tom Scully. Hello. And Joe Carras. Hello. Tom. Dial Polvishing Masters. It's um, it's the first day today and I'm absolutely gutted to be sat here instead of fishing. I must be honest. It hurts, doesn't it? It does, doesn't it, it, mate? It does. I yeah. mean, it's an event that um, Matt and I sort of talked about and came up with last year and it ran last year very successfully thanks to some very generous backing from Daiwa and also to Barn Farm. Um, and this year it's grown and we've actually got more people in it this year. We've got 112 people fishing today. Um, some of the biggest names in the sport, Will Basin's out there, this ship, Andy Power, um, Andy Bennett, that's last year's champion. You know, it's going to be a fantastic event. Um, and, you, and the best bit for you was calling the all-in. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's as good as it gets, I'm afraid. And I did see this ship, he started, he went out and just a couple of minutes ago and caught like an eight pound cart first drop. So I think, um, I think we're going to catch some fish today. Yeah. Do. Andy Power's going to stay over our shoulder, isn't it? And he's already been to some fish. Yes. Yeah. Like. Go on, Andy. <laughs> It's all looking good, isn't it? Definitely. When you were coming to Tumba Bar, you always your money on over three days. I don't know. There's some real good anglers. Obviously, there's some big names, but there's some good local anglers as well. But people like Andy Bennett and that. They've got to be, uh, got to be firm favourites. I think Andy Power, Andy Bennett, Dale Shepherd, maybe. Definitely. Dale's from well today, so. And now Matt's out there as well. He's yeah, Matt's form, there. isn't he? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, the weather's not brilliant. It's uh, heavy drizzle, I think, is the way you describe it. Nice fishing weather, though. Yeah, it's, conditions are perfect for catching fish. There's no getting away from that. It's um, no, it, it is definitely one of those days where you know, get your Gore-Tex on and get your head down. Yeah, get your head yeah. down. The, no, the nice thing about it is, though, I mean, I'm playing the top 12 overall on the event, so there's some nice overall money, two thousand pounds to the winner, plus a pole worth five grand, a direct air XLS. Um, but there's also a lot of daily money because yeah. I've put the optional pool up to 20 quid per day this year. The winner of the match today is going to pick up over 700 quid. That's brilliant. So it's, um, it is good. It's yeah. good. It's, uh, well, so the lads are out there and obviously we'll bring you a full report on, on that next week. Um, but uh, yeah, good, a good start to the day. Um, and you mentioned Matt Godfrey, the man in form. Uh, may have matched this qualifier at the weekend. He did. He did absolutely brilliant. He drew um, an end peg on a lake called River. This is, this is at Lakeview. The Lakeview Fishery, yeah, not a moment. And confusingly, they've got lakes named after all kinds of strange things. Like there's a lake called Canal, there's a lake called River, there's a lake called Lagoon, there's one called Marina. So these are actually, these are commercial fishery, and it wasn't a lake called River. It wasn't fishing in the close season, I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you're an MPEG on, on River. Um, and at, at the start, quite a few people said it was one of the worst pegs on the lake. You know, they didn't fancy it. Um, but. Matt sort of went into it confident as he does. He's caught some real big fish. He's some there's nothing, he, he never has any negativity, Matt, does he? No. He's just, you know. Gets on with it, he? Yeah, just gets on with it. Um, doesn't let anything get him down. No. Uh, and so what's he had? Uh, he had £78, pound, which was um, enough to win the match. Um, quite close though, it was a 67 13 was second. Ken Dawes was third with 66 13, and our fourth was 61 pounds. So two or three fish could have swung it for any of the sort of top few. That has been a close match. round, hasn't it? Yeah, it was a good close match, but. Um, I'm tough to death in that fight. I should imagine you are, because I, I think you share, don't you? So you're moving that together, you? I, I put on Facebook, if I was here, I'd be falling out with you right about now. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's a great performance. Um, you know, good top to anchor. Yeah, you know, he's a youngster, but he is very, very, very good. Frank. Mm -hmm. And you spoke to him after the match, Tom? Yeah, we've got a little, um, oh, that's our Jake, we've got a little, uh, little interview. Jake Fowles, our new editorial assistant, so he's, he's uh, interviewing him now. I'm here with Matt Godfrey, the winner of the Lakeview Fishery Maver Match This Qualifier. It was a difficult match, wasn't it, Matt? It was, Jake. Yeah, it was really difficult. Um, the lakes generally fish quite hard. Obviously, I won mine with 78 pounds. Um, but there were a lot of fish moving about, but they just seemed really difficult to catch. Loads of people said, oh, I had fish in my peg, but couldn't catch. And it was the same where we were, to be fair. But I was quite lucky. I drew sort of an end of one of the lakes, had a little bit of room, and just caught an odd fish all day, so it was quite good. Yeah, how have you caught them? Um, started on maggots down the edges, um, just kinder putting a few in, nicked a few there, changed to maggots across, caught a few there as well, and finished off fishing pellets down the edge. Brilliant. Got a few bigger carp on pellets. Perfect, and then in the final, do you fancy yourself? 
Ooh, we don't know. There's a few uh, names there already in the death ship. Andy Power, Jamie Hughes, just to name three. So I don't know, it's but gonna be a good one. Yeah, we'll put a bit of time in, have a practice, and see what happens. Yeah, I fancy you anyway. Well done. Cheers, Mucker. Good luck in the final. Well done, Jake. Great interview for your first effort. Um, maybe match this at Larford next. Yeah, another, another big event since I'll, I'll be having in a minute, mm. isn't it? But that man John Winkup, he seems to be another gang that's on fire, isn't he? The last yeah. sort of 18 months, he, he does man for the big occasion, isn't he? And uh, Jude then pegged 64 on, on the match lake and did the damage, £157. He, he, does, he does some miles, John, doesn't yeah. he? Is, is he still based over at Peterborough? He is, yeah. Yeah, he gets around a bit. He fishes all the big matches, doesn't he? He goes yeah. to White Acres five or six times a year and. Yeah, really puts, him, puts himself about, so... Really gentle with the sport as well. Such a, I love talking to John about fishing. He's one of these people, you know, you just feel he tells you everything he yeah, sees. Yeah, yeah, he, he does. I mean, I remember when he was a kid, um, he, he was exactly the same then. He always, always confident, but never, ever arrogant. No. Um, smashing Great bloke, brilliant. really good angler. So, his £157, it put him well cleared, didn't it? Yeah, uh, he did cut the second £119. He was on, on the, just outside the cafe on the match late, so he was... You know, done well to come second, but some way behind. I mean, John's caught a lot of fish dobbing, some down the edge and some short, so... But, yeah, great. Great to see you performance. Big man in the final. Yeah, and I say, so the lineup's coming together for mm. that. You start, started to get a bit exciting, maybe, match yeah, this. It's good, isn't it? It's a great event. It will be, yeah, it will be. I mean... Don't know where the final's going to be, do we? No, we've heard all sorts of rumours. It could be a move from Larford, but these are rumours at the moment, so... Well, at the moment, all the finalists think they're going to Larford. Mm. Um, well, some of them don't, you see. This is, oh, right. this, is where, <laughs> this is where the controversy comes in. Some of them have said, told us that it might be a Hayfield, but at the moment it's all conjecture. The official line is it's still at Larford, but we shall see. OK, we'll try and get some... Uh, we'll try and get the official get line on guys, that. can't we? Mm. Yeah. OK, uh, another qualifier as well, a decoy. Yes. You went on this one, didn't you? We did, yeah. Matt and I ventured over for this. I always think whenever I go there, what a fantastic venue. Absolutely full of fish decoy lakes. And a, a big weight, um, big weight needed to win. And so it turned out, you know, £211 nine. Gary Bell actually won it. He's been in the final before Gary has. Um, but there was a big bank of £200 weights. Uh, Dave Taylor had £204. Henry Williams had £203. So again, one or two fish in it. Um, I think Matt had a big weight there as well, he had £170 pound and didn't even make the frame with that. So that shows just how prolific the fishing was. Um, but we did catch up with Gary and got an interview with him as well. So. Okay, let's, let's take a look at Tom talking to Gary. Well, I'm here at Decoy Lakes with the Maver Match This qualifier from this round. It's your second time in the final, Gary Bell. Very well done. Thank you. You've got £211 today, haven't you? Yep. How have you caught them? 90% uh, of them come on the feeder. Instead of fishing 16 metres to the end, I'll just throw the feeder in and on a dead maggot, two mil pellet, dead maggot. Well, obviously, you know, there's some big fish in this lake, isn't there? Yeah. Have you had mainly big carp today? No. Have you had a variety of no, stuff? No, uh, the biggest carp I've had is probably five pound. Majority of fish were between ten and two pound. You've had a really busy day then, haven't you? Yeah, F1s, tench, and barbell. Awesome, so a real, real mixed bag. Lovely. I mean, was it last year you fished the final kind of a year no, before? two years. Two years ago when you were in the final. Um, do you fancy a chance to go back into it? Uh, well, you go at the end of the day. But uh, two years ago, I drew the shallow end. Yeah. And it was just not good at all. No one caught the time the shallow end. I think 30 odd pounds was the highest weight. So I'm hoping to draw either halfway or down the, down the upper end. Well, I fancy the chances. Fingers crossed. Very Thank best you very of luck. Well done today. Cheers. And uh, Gary loves these big events, doesn't he? Were you saying he's, he's planning on fishing more qualifiers just because they're, just because they're dying out? He does. You know, I mean, he fished decoy on Wednesday, it was very qualified, and he was not likely on Saturday. <laughs> um, so, think, he? Obviously, he likes fishing the big matches. He does, and again, he puts some miles, and I think he's from Essex, so it's, uh, he does some travelling. And are they decent daily payouts on these as well? Um, they're all right, aren't yeah, they? Yeah, very good. Yeah, yeah I mean, I, I'm sectional. Worth back in the drive for yeah. then, even if you're already in the, in the big money final. Yeah, I think like, you know, sections are 70 quid on all the ones I've fished. The theory is, obviously it's 70 quid to enter, so on all the ones I've ever fished, you win your section, you get your money back, 70 quid. So it's normally, normally good. Yeah. Okay, and there's also been a Fishermania qualifier, and we have to keep saying, mm -hmm. for the semi-final. Yeah. Yes. Which your mate Greg Cooper did the damage, didn't he? He did, he did. On, on he a did. tough Woodlands, it seems. Woodlands first. Yeah, Woodlands first. It seems to fish really hard, doesn't it? I mean, he's won it with £79, which for there is a, a low weight. You know, it's a big weight venue. 
But, I mean, brilliant. There's not many fish for that, is it? No, nine fish, we can believe. Nine fish? Yeah, nine fish. So, so that, that's a long five hours if you've only had nine fish. Yeah, I bet it's the shortest one for him, though. After the <laughs> match, whatever, <isn't> it? <laughs> Definitely. It was been in the final before, I guess, some years ago. Um, I think about eight or nine years ago it was. Mm. And I know it's always been a big thing for him trying to get back, in, back into it. But he's such a good angler. He's one of these anglers, Greg, who slips under the radar a lot. Um, but where, wherever he goes, especially commercial fishing, he does really, really well. Um, and he's actually fished maggots at Woodlands, which is quite, I'm quite surprised. To, to, he caught a maggot short. Um, big carp, nine fish, 79 for. Yeah. Job done. Job Thank done. you very much. Well, half the job done. Now he's got to go to the semi, and I still cannot get over that. So, okay. Um, take a quick break now. We'll be back uh, with more from this week's match scene. Welcome back. Um, big weekend at uh, Western Pools. You know, yeah. We talked about it last week and um, great event for the juniors and intermediates. As ever, yeah. Western Pools is a real hotbed, isn't it? And they've just had the Match Aid mini festival, which is for juniors, you know, under 18. So great event this. You know, they do loads of stuff for the kids and it's nice to see them doing some good events for them. So um, they split up. They had 15 and under and then 16 to 18 age categories, which kept, you know, plenty of interest there and nice little two day festival. I think. It was um, won by William McCrainer, who was using my pole, believe it or not. Really? Yeah. Well, You're I thought was. Yeah, when, when I, I changed from president. Never been used now, before, probably. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. it um, Scott Jeans very kindly said, rather than sell it and send the money to Preston, I could give it to somebody who I thought was deserving, and I gave it to young William, and uh, he's not stopped winning on it since, bless him. <laughs> <laughs> It's interesting yeah. to see that the top three all came, have got three points, so yeah. you know, really close, decided on weight, which is good to see. So obviously real good anglers. Two day festivals, they've all had a first and a second yeah, at, yeah. at least. Um, and the weights were quite close as well, I think. Yeah, yeah, I mean, William's at £149, so two nice days fishing. Two lovely days fishing. And then he's beat Robert Swan in second place by just £3. So three £3 over two days, absolutely nothing on a commercial nothing. fisher. Um, and Aidan's had 106, so there's been plenty of fish around. And this 16s to 18s age group. Yeah, your mate Christian Jones. Paul yeah, Ray. I can't believe he fished it. He's, he's taking pocket money England on young kids. He's an England international and he's a, he's Sponsor. beats all the men at the venue, he does. And Cagsy Parry in third, so I'm not impressed yeah, with them. No. But yeah, Christian Jones won it four points, 227 pounds. Yeah, he just snuck it though, hasn't he? Yeah, um, Jake Nightingale also four points, 224 pounds, and Cagsy Parry Third, six points, two hundred and twenty-five pounds. That is that is a name to conjure with, Cagsy Parry. Carrigan, 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 Carrigan is his real name. Oh, is that a Carrigan? Right, okay. You wouldn't conjure with him. He's a black belt in about four different yeah. martial arts. He's <laughs> a right hard little case. <laughs> but it's, it's interesting, though, isn't it? Because they did like live feeds of the lads fishing and stuff on Facebook. So it's real, real good for him. Yeah. I thought it was awesome. Real I really event. well done event. Yeah. yeah. Well, well done, well done, Western Falls. A, a great one. Okay, so the juniors, the intermediates had a great time. There was also a frenzy open on the Saturday. There was, yeah. Um, it was actually a two-day thing. On the Friday, they had a bit of a new product day. Um, we got all the new products out on the bank, and the new anglers sort of looked at them, got people Lots down. and lots and lots of orange stuff. <laughs> lots of orange, orange stuff, orange. yeah, that's it, and black. I think, actually, they're toning the orange down a little bit. I think it's more white now. They're sort of, they're sort of mellowing a little bit with age. But um, they've got some from other new gear. Um, and they also had kids down from a local school, um, so we sort of introduced a few youngsters to fishing as well. The Frenzy sponsored things on the Friday, and then the Saturday again, the Frenzy Anglers fished the open match, but they did um, invite locals to take part as well. It was won by Colin Wazek with 106 pound, a peg one on Belvedere. Uh, Danny Maxfield, who's a great, great young angler, works in Fosters of Birmingham, lovely lad. 
Uh, he was second. He had £99.6 off peg eight on Stratton. And that man, John Winkup, was third with 98.14 off peg 27 on Belvedere. Whilst on his travels again. Mm. Yes. I reckon he'll have had a few beers in there, you? Oh, he likes a pint, doesn't he? Yeah. I've seen him. His record at Whitehackers was 26 pints of lager, John. John Winkle. Mm. We know that Western Pauls likes to serve an ale, doesn't he? Yeah, so. I can see that being the message. <laughs> <laughs> but he's a man with capacity, yeah. that's not denied. Yeah, he's, a big, he's, a, he's a big lad, yeah, he's got some bulkers, John. So, well done talking to him, well done to Frenzy, uh, well done to Weston. Um, last week we talked about the Makings Spring League yeah. and it was the final of the Saturday League and the Sunday League. Yeah, the not say a ones on the Saturday which Stuart Polsall won um, in style with a round to spare and then this Sunday it was the, just the Sunday Spring League and he won that as well and he won the match both days while he was there. Because <laughs> we mentioned last week that, that Stuart had already got that one yeah. in the bag and, and then he actually won the match. Yeah, then. So, and then he's won two this weekend as well. Friday. He is, he's obviously knows that place inside out. Yeah. What sort of waste has he had? I mean, he's fished okay, hasn't he? Yeah, he's fished okay. I think he's had £71 on Saturday on Derwent, which is by the bike of Derwent, to be fair, and then he's had £93 off Snake Peg 10 on, on Sunday, but such a good angle. I mean, at this place, he dominated for years, and now he's moved on to Makings, and he's just taken that apart. It's a real so. natural, isn't he? He was another one on the rivers as well, didn't Just he? wins, and he? Wins, mate. He's got a knack of winning matches, which is a good knack to have, isn't it? It is in this game. Well done, Stuart. You'll get banned. <laughs> um, and also, the uh, England feeder team are out in Serbia at the moment. Yeah, some promising signs by the sounds of it. Um, obviously, this is the World Championship, the practicing for which is next weekend. Um, Tom Pickering's gone out along with Adam Wakelin, Mick Viles, Steve Ringer, Phil Ringer. I think Rob Wharton's gone as well, Rob Wharton, Dean Barlow. And Dean Barlow, of course, yeah. Um, and all the signs are, it's going to be a great, great world championship. Lots of small fish showing. It's going to be a busy, it's going to be busy yeah. feeder fish. I mean, it's going to be low weight, but lots of fish. Yeah. From what I've been told, odd better skimmer, but mainly I think it's, it's going to be a real fishing match for a lot of fish. So. That'll be really. I think, think it'll suit. I'm going to say I think it'll suit England, won't it? Yeah, it should. Do. I think there's some local teams that when they went and did that friendly a few weeks ago that stood out a bit. Hungary, I think it was. But England but, will have learned from England that. England should have learned from that, and I'm sure they'll, they'll try and get make it free on the trot. Well, so that's this weekend, yeah. and that is only so hopefully we'll be able to get some feedback from that um, for next week's show. Um, the New Junction Canal, we mentioned that, that there was an open on last weekend. There was, and this weekend they actually moved the, the old Super League, it's actually now called, called Paul Cagle's Happy League. Um, it's the old <laughs> Super League. I don't want to ask why. <laughs> <laughs> big match though, isn't it? Yeah, always big um, match. I think there's 100 on it, won't they, again. And, uh, he gives them loads of room, you know, he generously pegs it, runs a great match pole does, really, really good. And uh, my old mentor, Mick Lodge, took it out with 20 kilos of skimmers. Brownie Nosset? Yeah. Brownie Nosset? Yeah, Brownie Nosset. He's, um, I yeah, remember these things. My hero he is, absolutely brilliant, and he's, he's won more matches on the junkie than anyone I know. Unbelievable. And, uh, and he had a hell of a weight for it as well, didn't he? 20 kilos of skimmers. It's a lot of fish, though, isn't it? It's gone through a change of junkie has, because when we were growing up, it was all roach and chub, and all of a sudden, in the last two years, skimmers have come into the system, so certainly trying to span them in the works with adrenaline, hasn't it? How's he caught them, Joe? It's caught on a feeder, just chucking three quarters, little feeder, kept casting it regular, and he's had 21 skimmers, so lovely. Lovely fish, isn't that, isn't it? Yeah. But I mean, the thing that stood out for me looking down the result for that, I think eight kilo was sixth, wasn't it? Yeah, eight kilos. So there's been some fish all the way through then, by the sounds mm. of it. I think the roach are tightly shouldered as they were when you won last week, you know. No, they were everywhere, Joe. No, 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 last week they were tightly shouldered, Tom, <laughs> no, I've heard, were. yeah. No, they were. Yeah. So no, you, you, you'd, net, <laughs> you'd put nets either side of your peg, I was told that. But, but yeah, they seem to be tightly shouldered and this, there was anglers catching on hemp and stuff, where there were, you know, roach to catch, but then there was... All the people that couldn't catch a roach, yeah. Where roach were caught in, yeah. in some sense. They will spread out as, yeah, as, as the weather's still stable. Mm. Mm. Bait was in as well, you know, when we were up to this match, it should be, it should be good. Good signs of the adrenaline. Definitely. Yeah, Definitely. Oh, and we've got a practice match this weekend. If anybody wants to book on, on, uh, on Sunday, Sunday the 19th, my number's on the bottom of the screen, just uh, drop me a text. You put my name down. Go on then. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, it's big week. Um, the river's open yes. this week. Um, Riverfest kicks off on the 18th of June on the colder. What's that going to be like? I think, if it's the upper column, which I think it is, yeah. it's quite wild and a, chub, a lot of chub fishing, a lot of stick float fishing. Dennis White loves it. A bit of anything there. goes on there. Yeah. 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 They'll have shrouds and stuff on the, their matches, whether they're allowed this week, I'm not sure. But it'll be, um, depends on the rain, I guess, doesn't it? It could do with a bit of rain, I reckon. Mm, I think we're going to get some. We've got a bit today, haven't we? Yeah. Yeah. This week. Um, I know Dennis White and Keith Hobson, it's their stomping ground. They fish all the matches on there. And, uh, a lot, lot of world of line fishing, some pole to hand. We did a feature with Dennis at the upper column a couple of years ago. Yeah. And uh, it caught 
God, show me some great big whales. Just fishing a pole to hand. You know, so. yeah. Yeah. No, lovely fishing. Every and, different on there, isn't it? and River Fest has really captured the imagination yeah. there. I mean, you know, from an initial idea from Dave Harrell, mm. it, it's. I think that's probably the biggest success that the Angling Trust have been in charge of over the last few years. Yeah, I think really, they've done a really good job of that. Yeah, really, really good. So, Loads of money to be won as well in that, isn't there? Is it 10 grand to the winner? It might have even gone up this year, I'm not sure. Yeah, and, and it's, to be fair, it's a real success story because not only has it created a great event, but it's probably rejuvenated interest in a brand, in an area of fishing that would... The, the, yeah, that was, you know, yeah, absolutely. River fishing now is, is booming, isn't it? And I think it is thanks to Dave and that competition. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you've got that, you can... Fished all them, and then you've got Evesham. So there's some great river fishing now, isn't it? Evesham, you've reminded yeah. me. Now, I've got a pad over here because I spoke to Di Raphael about the Evesham Festival. Yeah, we need these. <laughs> you'll, you'll need them one day as well, yeah. Tom. Um, yeah, just a quickie. Um, quite a few of the qualifiers have, have, have already sold out or got waiting lists. Um, there are team spots available for the Evesham Team Championship qualifier on the 31st of July. Um, if you go on to www.hamptonferry.com and see the details there, the Evesham matches are always well attended. Um, as I say, I know several of them she's already got waiting lists for, so if you're fancying Evesham this year, um, check as soon as you can and get booked on. Um, I think that's it for this week's guys. Um, I'm going to leave you with a busy week organising this festival, and we'll leave you until next week with some footage of this match getting underway. Thanks for watching.